So I'm back at the old review park to uh, review not a quad but a charger this time. And I've been seriously delinquent in reviewing this thing because, uh, I don't know, I guess I'm a procrastinator and also it's so good that I just kind of started using it and included it in my day-to-day -day routine and sort of forgot about it. So uh, sorry about that and especially sorry I guess to Banggood who sent it to me. It's slotted into my day-to-day -day usage and I literally use these things every day uh, and I'm just 100% happy with it. I mean, even if you look on the Banggood uh, reviews, you'll see that this thing has an average of uh, 4.96 out of 5 stars or something crazy like that. It's just definitely good. So, there are other reviews that will probably tell you all of the real deep nitty-gritty charging stats, etc. And honestly, I don't need to go into that. I just want to tell you sort of why I like it so much and the key features to think about if you're choosing a charger and why this is a really good one. Um, normally I try and find some sort of you know balances pros and cons for my reviews but I'm gonna struggle with this one because there aren't many cons that I can think about I especially when I was choosing the charger I did not want one that was DC input only to me an AC input is massively important um, I don't want to have a second item with cables connecting to this one. Granted, maybe if you want to charge 15 batteries at a time, you want to have one massive DC supply and charge a whole lot of charges or power a whole lot of charges with that. But for me, that's not the case. Being, I fly mostly, I fly whoops, I fly, um, you know, micros, and I fly some sort of lightweight four or five inch stuff. So for me, being able to charge 4S and 6S is important, and being able to charge a whole lot of small 2Ss and 1Ss is also important. As far as um, charging the big batteries, you know, we could charge something like this guy is a reasonably large 4S battery. In fact, he's slowly puffing into an even larger, so... Uh, and that it will charge just fine you give it its full 1c is 5 amps 4s is absolutely no problem of course it could do a 6s as well no problem uh, for me though this size of battery is not what i'm most of the time doing this suspicious looking battery is made out of um, 618 650 lithium ion cells and the charger has an option to charge lithium ion um, this is in a 2S config, which I actually use for crawlers. It's made up out of, out of an old uh, laptop battery pack. But I also use this to power the charger, and that's something cool. You can use a 2S battery to power the charger to charge a success. The step-up DC supply inside here can handle that, which obviously you're not going to take a 2s and charge a, a, a even bigger success or something that doesn't make sense you've got to think about your watt hours but for the sake of charging perhaps a whole lot of small 2s toothpick batteries then something like this is perfect and you go use one of your old uh, crawler batteries and if you're not into rc crawling you should be so fix that so a lot of chargers have a banana jack and you plug that in and then you have the appropriate connect on the end of your banana jacks um you know it's got its it's pros and cons, but for me, the XT60 is probably the best connector in this size out there, and it's the one that I prefer, so this makes sense. You can see that I've created these XT60 to XT30 adapters, which are extremely easy to do, and I use those for charging my toothpick batteries if I want to charge a single 520 milliamp hour battery, or whatever sort of normal 2S size battery. Now one trick that I like to do, because I use a lot of these small 2S batteries, is I've created the small board which has three 2S balance connectors in series with an XT60 to the most positive and negative, and a balance plug to the tops of each cell basically. And I can connect three of these 520 milliamp cells that I like. If I can find them, here we are. And then I can plug the XT60 into the charger and I can plug the balance port into the charger and I can charge this whole thing nicely balanced charged as though it is one 6S cell. 
and I can do that on both channels so I'm charging 6 2S 520mAh batteries at the same time and of course in the field I could do that off a big old battery like that or in fact off a 2S battery like this. Here I'm going to just plug this in. There we are. You can see now that my battery has been picked up. Channel 1, let's move there. And there are the cell voltages. You can see they're all at storage voltage now, which is exactly what we want. And one of the massive benefits of a real charger like this is that we can storage charge all of our batteries nicely. Uh, if you're anything like me in the past, you might have started this hobby out, especially if you're in the, uh, the realm of micros and whoops, you might have used these small USB chargers which charge six batteries at once and are great, except when you're whooping you often go and charge 20 batteries and then you break all of your whoops with 10 left to go and they're left and you can't discharge them to storage voltage, etc. Uh, and that is just terrible for the batteries. So you can do the same thing that we've did with the 2S and you can make a small adapter that has some PH2s. I decided to only make a 4S version here. So there's four PH2s, a 4S balance lead and an XT30. And I can take those plug in my whoop batteries here, one, two, three, four, four whoop batteries, I always prefer to plug the balance leads in and out first because they're the most delicate so if you're using too much force on the big connectors and you accidentally rip it you're going to destroy the balance lead. Alright, and now you can see, there we have the individual cell voltages of each one of my WHOOP batteries, and I could charge them all up or discharge them to storage voltage as I wanted to. To do storage is as easy as pressing in this button, choose storage, these are LiPos, these are actually LIHV, so I can select that. And then I can say 0.3 volt uh, amps seems appropriate. Start. And it always checks when you use LIHV, which is nice, just in case you accidentally uh, have a regular LiPo in there. And there we go. Busy discharging my Whoop batteries to a storage voltage, which is brilliant. Now they're not going to get murdered by lying fully charged in my bag. This is a small foil cell that I use for my Explorer. And there we are. So I go to channel number two. You can see the cell voltages. They're all at storage. I select the, ch uh, select the task. We would like to charge these. This is not an HV pack. Select LiPo. The current setting, this is a 650, so I'm going to use a approximately 0.6 amps for 1C, start, and off we go. Now on one channel we've got a 4S battery charging, on the other channel we've got 4 WHOOP batteries busy going to storage voltage. These things are completely independent and it's just fantastic. Now maybe whilst you're doing that, if you feel like it, you could plug something into this handy USB port and charge your cell phone. Uh, if that's too much hassle for you to plug in a cable, you can in fact use the wireless charger that's built into the top of this thing to charge your cell phone or whatever if that's a, something that you like to do. The user interface is really easy. You've just got this little jog wheel which you click in. Um, so you select a channel with the channel button and then you click it in and you can select what you want to do. Now something that might not immediately be obvious unless you read a manual is when you're in this channel 1 channel 2 overview you can hold this in 
and there you get all your system settings. Now, the one thing I like here is we can set up the minimum input voltage, which I think comes set up for success, but I set mine to uh, 7 volts, which means that if I'm using one of my 2S batteries to power this whole thing, it's not going to discharge it below a safe voltage, and I'm not going to ruin my big battery that I'm using to charge my small batteries if I don't pay attention to how much capacity it's got left. We can also change the volume of the beeps, etc., because they are a little bit loud and annoying to start with. We can even give this thing a device name, which is probably cool if you've convinced all of your friends to buy the same charger. And you can set up the sort of how annoying the beeps are at the end of charge cycles, which is helpful, especially if you are charging these at home and trying not to annoy your wife. Probably the most irritating thing about this is how loud the fan is. Um, when it's charging and honestly it's not that bad but you probably don't want it sitting next to you whilst you're watching tv unfortunately it's difficult to think of much else to say about this thing because it's just pretty good it works i you can see how dirty and dusty it is because i took this thing with me camping in the last week and i had a few of these big batteries and with my few big batteries, I was able to keep all of my little whoop and toothpick batteries going over the weekend where there was no electricity, and that was absolutely fantastic. There are a few other little things which are cool and useful features. One of my favorite ones is you can set this thing up, you can choose a channel, and you can select one of the tasks is power supply. And you can actually set up an output voltage and a maximum current or uh, power and then you can use this thing as a regular DC power supply which is probably makes less sense if you're powering it off a battery but if you're using it as off the mains power supply you can use it in your lab it's obviously not fine grain control but it could be used for just debugging quads on the bench maybe or you could use it at home for powering your DC power, uh, soldering iron if you wanted to. I've used it just to test DC, uh, I used it to test an inflatable mattress pump. Partly as an interesting test of device and just because it was useful to run the thing at home. So that's always something handy to have, especially if you don't have a full-blown DC power supply uh, in your home lab already. The other thing is, is that it can chain, charge any kind of battery chemistry you can think, um, we, including uh, lead acid, which is quite interesting, and um, NICAD and NIMH and all of those sort of things. Maybe the lead acid is useful once you've uh, depleted your car's battery in the field and then want to put the power back from your batteries. <laughs> I'm not quite sure. I haven't found a use for it yet, but it's nice to know it's there. The only minor annoyance to this thing is the volume of the fan, which obviously difficult to judge in a video, but you can hear it in comparison to my voice here. Um, yeah, I... You know, you don't want it sitting next to your head whilst you're watching TV, but if it's in the same room or the room next door, it's not going to bother you. Uh, in the outdoors, it's not really annoying either. Yeah, worth thinking about. It's probably not at a level that's going to annoy somebody who's charging the batteries, but it's maybe loud enough to annoy the wife of somebody who's charging their batteries. Of course we can see here the charge status of each of the cells but we can also scroll and you get more information like the internal resistance which is useful for figuring out or at least uh, tracking the health of your cells uh, although to do that you should really record the um, the you should really record the internal resistance of the cell when you get it and then compare it later so that's perhaps not very useful here uh, you can also see, and this is what I wanted to show, the DC input voltage, which is good to know if you're powering it off a battery like I am now. I'm at 8 volts and I'm powering it off a 2S battery, so that's perfect, it's no problem. And then you know, internal uh, temperature and the number of milliwatt hours consumed. It's also helpful to know the milliamp hours that you're putting back in your battery. Of course, in this case, I'm charging four 1S batteries as though they were a um, 4S, so 
it's a bit misleading but if you're charging a single battery at once you can then know exactly how many milliamp hours you have consumed last time you used the battery and that's very helpful for calibration and just for knowing how efficient your quads or other RS RC vehicles are. Unfortunately, a charger is just not a particularly sexy thing to review. Uh, it's hard to show you crashes and flips and loops. Uh, as somebody who's come from a, a history of using crappy, you know, 2S chargers made for cars and USB chargers for whoops, etc., I initially wasn't convinced it was worth actually spending the money on a real charger. Uh, fortunately, I was able to get this thing re for review, and by golly, it has really impressed me, and you need one too.